Hi guys, so today Arteza sent me a bunch of amazing products to try and I have used their paints before and really enjoy the colors. The acrylics are extremely bright and they dry very true to color, um, which is important. You know, you don't want something green drying black. Um, they sent me these metallic markers and I guess they're good for glass, using on glass, so I'm going to figure out a way to use those. And then, oh my gosh, look at this amazing set of alcohol ink markers. And I've been dabbling in alcohol inks, and I think this is an awesome way to maybe try um, a different approach. Um, the stretch canvas, of course, 18 by 24 is a great size for a living room or whatever, so I'm excited to try that. Um, and then look at all these gouache paints. I've never tried fluid acrylics um, with gouache, so I've never done a pour painting or anything like that with it, so I'd like to see if it'll work. And if not, I'm sure there's a lot of other ways that we could use those paints. So thank you to Arteza for this beautiful haul, and I can't wait to try all of the products here today. We'll just be focusing mostly on the uh, 14 color um, acrylics. One thing I will definitely say about these acrylics, um, they're, uh, first of all, the packaging for these is awesome. Uh, they're extremely rich and creamy. Let me focus in on here and I'll show you what I mean. Um, they're very thick. I wouldn't call them heavy body, but they're close to heavy body paint. Definitely not a soft bodied paint that comes in those uh, plastic tubes. Very creamy, very rich. It was very easy to mix my colors together. Um, and let me show you my actual favorite part. This is, this is what sets this packaging apart. Um, I'll use the titanium white as an example, and I actually love their white. I wish it came in much bigger packaging because I would love to buy a big amount of that. But now watch, look. See how you just roll up, just like a tube of toothpaste. Roll it up, unscrew the top, and squeeze out every single last drop. And that's, you know what I'm talking about when you have a tube of metal paint and you're trying to get the end out. You never get it all out. And I've even cut those paint tubes open and found, you know, three tablespoons of paint in there that I was unable to get out. Look at that. It's totally and completely gone. Awesome. Love that packaging. So the painting I wanted to do today, if you guys saw my collaboration with Fiona, um, I'll leave a link right here for it. Oh, those flower dips, they're so stinking addictive. <laughs> I don't know. I just want to keep making them and I can't help myself. And, um, you know, there's, I actually haven't watched a ton of her videos. I've seen a ton of Fiona's flowers, um, you know, in some of the Facebook groups and stuff. So I've seen a ton of her artwork and on Instagram, but I actually haven't watched a ton of videos. So I'm pretty sure that there's a bunch of techniques I should probably be using, but, um, you know, when she taught me how to do just the reverse flower dip, and this is the one I'm using again, because that's the one I know. But I did mix up a few different shades of the blue and I used some brown. Um, I added, you know, some white in there to make a, like a sky blue color. And then, um, yeah, and then I went ahead and added like a metallic pearl color to that, um, a pearl medium actually. So, one thing I wanted to say is there is a few little tips and tricks I've learned already from doing these flower dips and I've only done maybe, I don't know, 10 or something. But one thing that I've noticed for sure is the surface tension plays a really big role uh, on how they turn out. The center of the flower, you know, every flower has a center and that center 
is the last place that you want to come um, unattached in the dip. Does that make sense? So as you're lifting, you want to make sure that the center is the last piece that's stuck to the canvas before you pull it off. And there's a couple of different ways to do that, but you know, one thing is use plastic that's not too tight. Because I did try it once with plastic that was, I just thought, oh no, I'm gonna just get this really pristine, smooth, taut surface. And that actually did not help at all. Um, it's almost like just a little tiny bit of play in the plastic wrap helps. And I don't really see other people having lines in their plastic wrap, so maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> maybe it's just a coincidence, but this is something that as seems to be working for me. Um, so that's one thing. And then the second thing is when I use the canvas, when I take the canvas for the reverse dip, I don't put hardly any paint on there at all. Um, I found that actually less paint is better. So I almost just wipe the paint on just a little bit of paint and almost just to moisten the canvas, if you can imagine. And that's almost exactly what I'm doing, just moistening the canvas. And then don't press down too hard. You see I'm very gentle. I'm basically making sure that the canvas touches the plastic, the, the, the bottom surface, and is kind of, you know, creating a little suction between the paints. And that's what creates those beautiful petal-like qualities. Um, if I press too hard, the paint just gushes out and then I ended up with a blob. Here's the other thing, when you release the canvas from the plastic, it may not look like it on camera, but I'm actually kind of using like a rocking motion all the way around. So I'm trying to release the edges first. Um, it's such a micro movement, you almost can't, it, the camera doesn't really even pick it up. But I'm listening too for that plastic and feeling where it's adhering to. And at a certain point in the center you can feel it's releasing and then boom. It just, it just comes undone. And that's it. Um, these flowers develop too. It may not be that pretty when you first pull it off. But I've noticed that as the paint settles, the cells start to build and if you, you know, here's like a little, I just wanted a little swirl in the center of that. You can still manipulate it a little bit. You don't have to just accept it for exactly like it is. And if you don't like it, you can always read it. So I hope these little tips and tricks help. Oh, and really quick, I wanted to say thank you to David R. Deborah P and Carol D for your support for my channel. If any one of you would like to support my channel, please click the link in the description box, which is to my PayPal account. And a big thank you to Arteza. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Arteza, but there are affiliate links below if you'd like to purchase with a discount code. I will continue testing out Arteza products. I love the paints. Um, the colors are extremely vibrant and I love the creaminess of them and I absolutely love the packaging. These are not your average craft paints. These are definitely a step above that. So I would highly recommend um, Arteza acrylic colors and um, love their paints. So I'll continue using them. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, subscribing, hit the notification bell to be notified when I have another art video. And as always, thank you for letting me make these art videos just for you.